Related to all of this government efficiency and everything, officially, Vivek Ramaswamy and Elon Musk got appointed to the Doge Council, Department of Government Efficiency today. However, you know, it doesn't have any actual, at least currently, it doesn't have any actual legislative power. So it's like, it feels like it's like a way to keep these two people busy. <laughs> It feels like a, like, yo, go work on the book report, little bro. We'll see. We'll see, right? Again, I, I'm also a supporter. I mean, I, I can't think of someone I'd rather less have run it, but I would love to have some government efficiency, of course. I talk about it all the time. I think we vastly overspend on things, and I'm very worried, were he in charge of it, that it would... I mean, he's talking about cutting two trillion from the federal budget. I promise you, unless they have some authority over Congress, that will not happen. So we'll see. Uh, that was something I thought was pretty funny that happened a few hours ago. But you know, Musk is gonna walk in the Department of Energy and fart bring his inner phone over. I mean, he doesn't have the authority. That's what this body doesn't have any authority. We'll see. I mean, maybe. I'm not saying it, he can't use other methods, but through this, it's probably just veiled austerity. There's nothing veiled about it. <laughs> what is veiled about we need to? cut two trillion dollars from the government budget that is six and a half trillion it, it's not veiled at all just as long as he has a connection under the formal authority yeah we'll see we'll just see if those connections hold up that's the idea we are living in a simulation bro what is this elon musk all actions of the department of government efficiency will be posted online for maximum transparency hey remember when he said he was going to make all actions for twitter and then x part of a public vote <laughs> and then he lost one vote and then never did it again does anyone remember when he said that publicly? In fact, I'm pretty sure the tweet is still up. Oh, wait, I can't search for vote on his channel because he has he has talked a lot about voting in the past few months. There is absolutely no way to find any old posts where he said vote. There's literally so f many of these. All right, anyway, uh, what did he say? Let's, let's read this, let's, let's read this. Anytime the public thinks we're cutting something important or not cutting something wasteful, just let us know. I mean, do you understand how that, that's not a good, that's a random system. Of course, every single thing will have at least like one defender. There'll be somebody who can tweet at you. We will also have a leaderboard for most insanely dumb spending of your tax dollars. This will be both extremely tragic and extremely entertaining. I can't, I can't. The impact this will have on governments around the world can't be overstated. Thank you. The entertainment value will be epic. <laughs> the idea of people cheering with joy and glee as the world's richest man fires as many government workers as he can. <laughs> Love it as a role employee. Yeah, I mean, we, we, got, we have absolute waste in our government. I, I will see. I, I'm actually very interested to see how the dynamic of this plays out because there have been efficiency pushes in the past and they always run up against the fact that Congress has the power to control the purse strings and not a single one of them will vote to cut spending, let alone the larger and scarier question that right now our economy is entirely propped up by government spending. And while I do agree we need to cut it, it's gonna be... <laughs> It's going to be painful. If there's no government or a lot less government jobs, it's going to be a f mass, mass, mass surge of unemployment. The private market cannot support those jobs. They don't exist right now. Yeah, one of the first ways we can cut jobs to make government more efficient is to cut the two <laughs> people in Doge. <laughs> Co-chairs of a department is already a bad sign for efficiency. I got to be honest with you. Every department I've ever worked in that had co-chairs had a lot of debate and nothing getting done would be cautiously optimistic if anyone else is in charge. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's, I, I think we need efficiency. I'm skeptical that he's the right man. I thought I'm skeptical that the world's richest man is the right man for the job. <laughs> Who has a ton of government contracts, right? What if the most efficient thing to do is to cut a government contract with Tesla? Is he going to support that? Is he going to make the right choice? Do you know what I'm saying? There's a little bit of a conflict of interest. You mentioned that a lot of new jobs that were added and propping up the unemployment numbers were government jobs. Is that still the case? That is 100% the case. 100% the current, current case as we stand. Government and healthcare are like the only two jobs areas that are growing. Trump picks Fox News host Pete Hegseth for defense secretary. I'm sorry, what? Is this real or does he have qualifications outside of that? Or is he literally a Fox News host? Let me check, let me, cause I, I don't know if chat's gonna lie to me. His background is, he's an American television presenter, author. He was in the Army National Guard. I mean, at least he was in the military. I thought he was literally just a Fox News host. But since 2012, 12 years, I guess, he's been a Fox News host. Hmm. Secretary of Defense, huh? All right, well, what's his platform? Has he spoken about defense? Pete Hegseth, 
quotes on defense. He's pro defense. <laughs> Well, that settles it. I mean, if he's pro-defense, we got the right man for the job. His main thing is that he's expressed disdain for woke policies in the Pentagon. That's the first line item. He leads 1.3 million active duty troops. Pete is tough, smart, and a true believer in America first. With Pete at the helm, America's enemies are on notice. Our military will be great again, and America will never back down. He's a co-host of Fox and Friends. <laughs> It's just funny because now I'm, you know, I've met some generals growing up in military bases. Whenever my dad would have a general over for dinner, we'd have to like put on our best clothes and be on our best behavior. And my dad would like yell at us beforehand. <laughs> like, do not yell. Do not look up. Say thank you. Be nice. It's just funny to imagine uh, these generals now serving under Fox and Friends co-hosts. He almost killed someone with an axe. So did Thor. And he would be a great secretary of defense. Think about that. So did Gimli. And he was a great part of the fellowship. Who's going to win this battle with the lumberjacks? That's what's up next. I'm <laughs> Holy shit. He's Secretary of Defense, not Offense, folks. Okay? Had he had a shield, I'm sure he would have held it strong. What else does it say? What else does it say? He wrote a book called The War on Warriors, Behind the Betrayal of the Men Who Keep Us Free. Our elites are like the feckless, drug-addled businessmen at Nakatomi Plaza looking down on Bruce Willis's John McClane in Die Hard. <laughs> That's a quote from the book. But there will come a day when they realize they need John McClane. Sounds a bit like a power fantasy. We will see. He hasn't washed his hands in 10 years. Fox News host says he hasn't washed hands in 10 years. <laughs> That's the smile of a man who hasn't washed his hands in 10 years. That's the face you make when you say that. Germs are not a real thing? Wait, what? Was he joking? Okay, it's a joke. 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 Okay, I was like, there's actually no way that that... <laughs> I take care of myself and all that, but I don't obsess. Okay, he wasn't... He was like, all right, wait a minute. It sounds like he wasn't really joking. <laughs> and then got public backlash and then changed his... It's funny because, yeah, Trump is... Uh... Trump is huge about like Purell and staying clean hands as much as possible. What's this? I was deemed a extremist because of a tattoo by my National Guard unit. My orders were revoked to guard the Biden inauguration. This is the one. Is that the tattoo? Yep, right here. This one is what got me disinvited. Wait, he was a National Guardsman? This is the right guy? Wasn't he on Fox by then? Here's the washing hand clip. All right, let's decide if he was joking or not. Let's get a good, let's get a real analysis. I As I told you, my that. 2019 resolution is to say things on air that I say off air. I don't think I've washed my hands for 10 years. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not, germs oh, are not a real true. thing. I can't see them. Therefore, they're not real. So you're becoming immune. Okay, I think that last part was a joke. I think that, I mean, that's how I would say it. Do you know what I'm saying? That's like a joke I would make. I do think this guy doesn't wash his hands many times coming out of the bathroom. I don't think he thinks germs are not real. He did the big A cadence for the last part. You know, there's the kernel of truth. <laughs> I'm not, I wouldn't shake his hand, but I don't think he would uh, truly believe germs aren't real. New Trump cabinet announcement, crazy. Trump names Casey Anthony as director of Department of Child and Family Services. <laughs> Let's give her a shot. Let's give her a shot. Who else did he appoint? Somebody else. He appointed quite a few people. Oh, Rubio. Yeah, <laughs> he did. He appointed Marco Rubio, which is, I guess, big of him, given that Marco Rubio said this, you know, like back in You compared Donald Trump to a third world dictator yesterday in an interview with the New York Times. How so? Well, I don't know about a dictator. I said a third world strongman. There are many people on the right, in the media, and voters at large that are going to be having to explain and justify how they fell into this trap of supporting Donald Trump because this is not <laughs> <laughs> you just accepted the nomination to be his secretary of state that's just a, that's a pretty quick about face yeah we talked about this earlier we'll see we'll see we'll see what kind of power it has I mean I do think we need to cut government waste but so much of it is in the military I just feel like Elon's gonna cut like government jobs that do things <laughs> and not cut the massive pork barrel spending the massive military spending it's, it's going to cut, like, food stamps and uh, Social Security, and it's not going to... Well, actually, I don't think it's going to cut Social Security. I actually think the one rail you can't touch in America, regardless of party, regardless of power, is Social Security. I think if Elon tries to touch it, Trump will drop him like a hot potato. If you try to cut Social Security or Medicare, every time it's even been remotely floated and tried, it gets 
destroyed. Boomers will have to die because right now they have enough that it it wouldn't get through. So only Republicans say to cut Social Security and Medicare. That's the old. You guys understand? Like for a while there was like. The difference between the parties was big government versus small government was the idea. It was Democrats versus Republicans. And Republicans were more like conservative financially and they were like, don't spend on... That hasn't existed in decades. I mean, they both spend like f crazy and they just differ on social issues and like, you know, it's about the woke and it's about... It's not... There's so few Republicans left that would actually like win in power try to cut a budget the youngest boomers are 60 they have a few more elections while well, they're still relevant yeah the boomers will eventually die but then you know it's kind of whack for all the boomers to milk the maximum possible amount out of the government until the day they drop dead and then we cut all of the benefits for old people after that <laughs> Now millennials get old and have no social security and no <laughs> no Medicare and uh, they're just told to tough it out after the boomers <laughs> slurped up all of the f wealth. Screw millennials. Hey, what if, what if, how about this? How about we, we keep all the benefits for current old people, then we get rid of them for millennials so they have to suffer and then we bring them back for Gen Z. So like millennials will just suffer and all of their money will save in a big pile. And then when Gen Z comes back, when they get old, everything is easy. We'll skip a gen, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Gen Z will never get old, bro. <laughs> gen Z's getting older faster than any generation ever has gotten old. <laughs> because of how insanely weird Gen Alpha is, there's already such a massive split. It's already, there's like not even a crossover.